in Exodus chapter 15 verse 26 it says the following and he said if you diligently heed my voice the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight and give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes I will put none of the diseases on you which I brought on the Egyptians I am the Lord who heals you somebody say amen. amen healing is mentioned 138 times in the Bible one-fifth of the Gospels one-fifth of Jesus' ministry is healing first time healing mentioned in the Bible was when Abraham prayed for Abimelech it was interesting because Abraham actually had a problem in his own household and God expected him to pray for someone else in here we find something very interesting after Israel came out of Egypt and they started to complain and God warned them he told them he says if you diligently obey my voice if you pay attention to what I'm saying he says you will have really no disease and then he says in case you get a disease just heads up I'm Jehovah Rapha I'll heal you so I want you to see two things the principles of the kingdom bring divine health the power of the kingdom bring divine healing many of us will not need healing if we will obey the principles of the kingdom now a lot of the commandments of God if you read the Old Testament you'll find out these commandments didn't just have to do with morality of people it had to do with diet God was very specific make sure that they don't eat pork make sure they don't eat certain foods with blood there's a lot of actually diet laws in the Old Testament now if the Old Testament would have been written today the diet laws would be different the diet loss would be like this don't drink soda God will say you know thou shall not uh, eat more than three Krispy Kreme donuts a month the diet loss would be like this thou shall take 10 steps every single day the dietary loss would be like this thou shall drink half a gallon of water every single day the dietary loss would be like this thou shall burn more calories than thou consumeth because the the generation of that they didn't have processed foods and they were always active there was no cars and therefore most of the diet laws did not involve exercising it didn't involve not eating processed foods but it involved that generation and the struggles they had with the foods that they had and so God says if you obey the laws that I give you some of them are common sense God says you won't have the diseases that Egyptians had but in case you still get sick which probably will happen because you live in a broken world that is curses and demons he says I am going to introduce to you as a God who heals I want you to see God first doesn't introduce healing he first introduces health God first introduces health a lot of us will not need healing if we obey common sense laws of health because principles of the kingdom bring health now we live in a broken world you can be on a diet you can take the vitamins and you can watch your weight and you can watch your calories and burn as much as you consume and you can do all of that and still get sick because there's generational curses because there's demons and bacteria and everything and that's where God says I am your healer it's almost as God is saying if you ignore my commandments why do you even need to get healed you don't care about health it's very important we live in a world today it's it's crazy how overweight our generation is I know it's sensitive and I know some of you will get offended it's fine it's better to be offended than dead mm -hmm. and it's completely fine and I started to feel that about myself because after a particular time your metabolism you know it slows down you uh, you less active but you consume more food it's kind of like putting gas in your car and you're barely driving it and every day you're pouring more gas and gas guess what's going to happen you're going to flood the garage not with the river of the glory of God with the gasoline and that's exactly what happens with our generation it's very important that we as Christians that we take care of our health there is common sense things like eating right like constantly being active or um, watching particular foods why because these things God says they're his principles and they bring divine health and then we still are able to get sick you can do all the right things and still get sick and that's where we go to the power of the kingdom the healing of God can somebody say amen come on let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ the basis of our healing is based on three things the first one is the name of God the name of God we just read his his name is a healer 
the name and the nature of God he is a healer God doesn't just call himself by Jehovah Rapha you know like we call people with names we give them names uh you know when when parents are expecting kids and they're all which name is the cutest which name is the coolest which name God doesn't do that God only chooses a name that reflects a nature that's why God had to change certain people's names because God changed their nature and therefore their names had to be changed so God reveals himself as Jehovah Rapha God that heals you that means that is his nature that's who he is it's interesting God didn't reveal to, uh, to us as a God of tumor a God of arthritis he didn't say I am the God of cancer he says I am the God who heals means God is not the one that gives sickness he's the one that takes it away number two the basis of our healing and that is God's desire or God's compassion in the verse Luke chapter 5 we read where a leper came to Jesus and says Jesus if you are willing please make me clean and Jesus the Bible says touches him and says the following I am willing be clean if you ever wondered if it's God's will to heal people that answers it for everyone God is willing not only he has a nature he has the ability but God also has a motive he has a desire to heal people he doesn't have a desire to punish people with the disease and sickness and for those of you who maybe grew up believing in a more traditional perspective that God doesn't want to heal everyone God doesn't want to heal people he just wants to give sickness to some people to teach a lesson how many of you in your sound mind give your kid an arthritis to teach him a lesson and to do better in school nobody now it's true God redeems in sickness he teaches us things we can learn just like we can we can hear God through a donkey but that's not God's way of speaking to man God's way of speaking to man is through his word and through his spirit but sometimes even he uses a donkey so just because God uses a sickness to teach us something it doesn't make it him an author of that it is his desire to heal people we see in Matthew chapter 14 verse 14 it says Jesus saw multitudes and he was moved with compassion to heal them there's a version of Christianity that says miracles ended with the death of Jesus Christ or with the death of apostles and they have a very appealing evidence for that because Jesus was healing people to convince them he was God and now he convinced everybody he is God he stops healing them there's two problems with that version one not everyone was convinced he was God and number two it nowhere says in the Bible Jesus went healing people and says by the way the reason why I am clearing your skin opening your eyes I need to get everybody a message across I'm God I don't care about your blindness don't care about your leprosy I just want to get my name out there it's nowhere says that in the Bible it's true healings confirm Jesus is God like when Dan is playing piano it confirms he has fingers but Dan is not playing piano to prove to you he has fingers he plays piano because he loves music amen God heals people because he loves people that's all that's his motive he had no head hidden agenda some people he healed never served him he didn't take the healing back God is meddling love with humanity the third reason why healings the basis for our healing is the cross Jesus Christ took the diseases and sicknesses on the cross in Matthew chapter 8 verse 16 and 17 it says on the Sabbath after Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law from a fever in the evening because the Sabbath ended People started to come from everywhere to get healed and the scripture says and he healed them all and Matthew gives an explanation why to fulfill a prophecy that he bore their diseases in other words Jesus had to heal people because he purchased it on the cross now in Matthew chapter 8 Jesus has not died yet Jesus was already cashing out the check from the cross that has not been fully paid for yet can you imagine we are on the other side of the cross where the price has already been paid where Jesus has already taken a sickness upon himself we have a reason to believe for healing that is God's nature God's desire and God's cross where he purchased the, on the cross our healing can somebody say amen how many of you are grateful to God for the healing power of Jesus Christ Now I want to go a little bit further to talk about how Jesus being our healer how that translates into the local church and I want to share with you practically the culture of healing in the local church 
I've observed this from other ministries and I've observed this in our ministry and especially in the ministries where see healings and I want to mention a few things that create a culture of healing these things most of us already are practicing and we are going to practice them even more in the places where people get healed on a regular basis there's these things they exist in those churches and in those congregations maybe some of you come from congregations where healings don't exist you will actually find the reasons why the first one is people believe that God wants to heal everyone this is very controversial because many people do not believe that God wants to heal everyone and this is the problem if a local church if we will start preaching God doesn't want to heal everyone it's the same thing as putting a needle into somebody's balloon it deflates their confidence because then if God doesn't heal we have a backup plan or we have this thing where it must not been been God's will which means God's will is reduced to my experience I'm so anointed and so powerful that if I pray for you and you don't get healed it must not be God's will that's crazy to reduce God's big will to the level of my experience and if, if somebody argues that it is God's will not to heal everyone but just few people then I can argue that also it's not God's will to save everyone now we understand where this is coming from it's coming to protect because people don't get always healed and we need to give some kind of a justification and so it's easy to just blame it on God just because God wants to save everyone it doesn't mean that everyone gets saved just because God wants to heal everyone that doesn't mean that everyone will get healed there are sometimes things that exist that we don't understand but we cannot blame it on God because in Psalm 103 verse 1 and 3 I'm gonna read this it says the following bless the Lord O my soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the Lord O my soul and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your iniquities who heals all your diseases people sometimes come up to me and say where did you get that God wants to heal everyone Psalm 103 forgives all people say he didn't mean all that is a dangerous statement to say because before that he says he forgives all of my iniquities if you don't believe that he heals all of the diseases then you also have a grounds to believe he doesn't forgive all the sins it's in the same body Jesus took the sickness that he took the sin you may say but that Bible doesn't say by his stripes we were healed that everyone is healed yet in the same verse it says he was bruised for our iniquities it didn't say all iniquities it just says iniquities and we know it means all but when it comes to sickness somehow it's just it's just the ones that we get healed from but the ones that don't get healed just to leave God not feeling guilty we just say it must not be his will don't need to defend God God will take care of by himself can somebody say amen I want you to read Matthew chapter 9 verse 39 Matthew chapter 9 verse 39 then Jesus went around all cities and villages teaching in their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom healing every sickness and every disease among the people word every twice means every people say what about Job Job is not an expression of invisible God Jesus is we learn about healing not from Apostle Paul's thorn we learn about healing from Jesus Christ Jesus reveals God not Apostle Paul Jesus reveals God not Job Jesus is the revelation of God and in the Gospels four Gospels there is not one instance where someone came to Jesus being sick and Jesus did not heal them not one that means that Jesus Christ that is a standard for us now you may say why don't people get healed we'll get to that in a second but we don't want to reduce the belief in Jesus and the example he left us to the level of our experience oh let me mention inexperience God has given us his truth to raise our experience to the level of his word now reduce his word to the level of our inexperience if you believe God doesn't want to heal everyone then this is what happens you actually don't have to pray you don't have to fast you don't have to take a step you're actually taking a lazy way out you don't even have to pray for people for healing you don't have to believe in anything you don't have to stretch your faith in anything it's just simply God's if God's will is to be done well you read right now Jesus says it is my will it is his desire I understand it maybe offends some people 
but I'm talking about the culture of our church we believe God wants to heal everyone we also are practical we know that not every person probably is going to get healed but the problem is not with God what happens if somebody doesn't get healed number two when people don't get healed we do what Jesus told disciples to do in Matthew chapter Mark chapter 9 disciples were praying for one boy he didn't get healed and Jesus didn't come to the disciples and say guys since you're with me all the anointing is on you it must be God wanting to teach that family something Jesus didn't say that Jesus went healed the boy he came to the disciples and disciples were very wise about it because they said Jesus what did we do wrong and Jesus didn't just simply left it blank he says guys there's deeper levels of faith there is deeper levels of prayer and fasting means he challenged